The LG G6 is by far one of the strangest phones I've ever had to review. In some ways, the phone is absolutely fantastic, but in other ways, it totally falls flat. So here's my review of the LG G6. Let's start with the design. I think the size is perfect. Personally, I can hit all four corners of the display, and the shape of the phone makes it really comfortable in the hand. It's definitely a step above the LG G5, which looked like sh**. But yeah, design is definitely on point this year. Now, unfortunately, there still are a few issues with the design. The first and most important is the placement of the microphone. If you're anything like me and you keep your pinky at the bottom of the phone for support, the natural place for your pinky to rest is exactly where the microphone is. So that said, I can't tell you the amount of times that I've either tried to take a Snapchat or a video and the sound is completely muffled because my finger's covering the mic. Now, while we're down at the bottom of the phone, let's talk about the speaker. It sounds incredibly tinny and almost has a slight echo to it, but I will give them points on using USB-C which I'm always happy to see. That rhymed. Now another huge plus about this phone is the screen. It is incredibly beautiful. It's super crisp, super colorful, and I actually sort of dig the aspect ratio. Now one downside to that new aspect ratio is LG doesn't allow you to scale up like Samsung does with the Galaxy S8. Now this would be super useful for apps like YouTube, that way, for videos that don't have the correct aspect ratio, you can still take advantage of the full screen and get rid of the black bars on either side. Now, unfortunately, another downside is the software. If you know me and you follow this channel for any length of time, you'll know that I'm a sucker for stock Android. And this... this is not stock Android. This is... this is weird. It's sort of like an awkward cross in between iOS and Android. And honestly, after the first day, I just downloaded Nova Launcher and made it look like a pixel. So, yeah. Now, unfortunately, one of the single largest issues with this phone is the battery life. I can barely make it through half of the day, and that's if I'm lucky. And I mean, by no means am I a power user, and I'm not doing anything crazy with my phone. I'm doing the same thing that I did on my iPhone and on my Pixel and on basically every other phone that I've ever used, and this one just can't hold up. So I mean, it's safe to say that this is the worst battery life that I've ever had on a phone, ever. So let's talk about the cameras. And overall, I'm not too impressed. The photos come out a little too overly processed, like they've been overly sharpened, overly saturated, and just not natural looking. The one redeeming factor is the wide angle camera. Having that extra image is just unexplainably cool. So I mean, that said, the camera is a mixed bag for me. And honestly, the only thing holding them back is the post-processing software. But until then, the images that the phone produces look sort of cheap. And I mean, overall, that's sort of the moral of the story with this phone. Everything feels just slightly cheap. And I mean, it's not. It's not a cheap phone by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, this is a flagship phone. It just certainly doesn't feel like one. 